Hey everybody, this is my 20 long open topped office tank and I'm going to get in here and do a little bit of maintenance on it. I'm going to do a water change, change the filter, and most importantly I'm going to get in there and I'm going to trim back that swamp weed. Uh, that is my temple plant. It is getting nice and bushy and thick, but unfortunately that is also blocking a lot of the light if you'll notice how dark it is in the tank and now that I have that German Blue Ram in there, I really want a lot of that light to be able to get down into the tank. That fish really deserves to have a lot of light shining on it. It's beautiful, and I want to be able to see those nice vibrant colors. And those guppies are no exception. They're uh, vibrant, beautiful fish as well. So I'm going to do a quick before and after. The after part is going to be more important, so we'll make this beginning part very brief. I just want to give you an idea of how much vegetation is actually sticking up out of that tank at the moment. So there's your before. All right, now that we can see into the tank a little bit, we can have a closer look at the fish. But that's how much of the uh, temple plant I cut down. And we're going to talk about that temple plant in just a minute. But I did want to come in here and get a better look at my ram. You can already see all that bright, beautiful sparkle and that iridescent color. Absolutely gorgeous fish. Now the tank's still a little murky. I did just finish the water change about 15 minutes ago. I tried to let it settle down a little bit, but it's getting a little late in the evening. I haven't even had my dinner yet. It's actually sitting down on the counter right now, so I didn't want to put this off any longer. So the tank is still a little bit on the cloudy and disturbed side. It will clear up over the next uh, hour or two since I just finished the water change. I didn't do anything special. Uh, I did about a five gallon water change. But, because this tank is kept so warm, I lose a lot of water due to evaporation. Big old plant sticking out of the top, it's an open top tank, and it's very warm. So that's the recipe for a losing a lot of water. And I top it off every day or two with at least a gallon, sometimes two gallons if I've waited a couple days. And that basically distills the water in your tank. It condenses it. Uh, when the water evaporates out of the tank, that's all that is evaporating out of the tank is the water. And any dissolved solids in the tank, whether it's phosphates or nitrates or calcium or anything, that gets left behind and the water leaves. So you basically have more of it in a smaller amount of water. And then you top it off with fresh water and you add more stuff. When you put more water in, unless you're putting distilled water in, you're putting more dissolved solids in. And then the water evaporates down, and those dissolved solids get more condensed, and then you add more water. And if you do that too much, you'll really start jacking up the amount of dissolved solids you've got in your tank. So I am mindful of that. I don't have a lot of dissolved solids in my water. My water is notoriously soft, and we will be talking about that in a moment. But... I am still aware of it. I don't want to top it off too many times between water changes. And so in this case, I did a five gallon water change despite the fact that I've, you know, added gallons and gallons of water over the last, I don't know, maybe 10 days since I've done a water change on this tank. I don't know how long it's been. The filter was dirty, but it wasn't filthy. So it hasn't been that terribly long since I've done a water change. Uh, I did say I would keep on top of the nitrates on this tank for you so that we would be able to keep an eye on what's going on with that. Again, hard to hold with one hand, but you can see sort of what that looks like. I would call this 40 parts per million. Again, that's not doing it justice. We're using a very orange 2700K light. I'm holding it against the paper, uh, etc. But if you were here looking at that under good lighting, uh, you would probably put that at about the 40 parts per million mark. So that was what the before water was. I didn't bother to do an after. You know, I do have to buy that solution to do that test, so I don't see any point in checking to see what it is now. If it was that much before, it's less than that now. You know, we don't need to worry about exactly what it is now. We know it's less than that. And I did about a 25% water change, so it's roughly 25% less than whatever we just looked at. So 
we can talk about nitrates again at a different time. I just wanted to throw that out there and show you that I did indeed do a nitrate test and that's what it looked like. The other thing I want to talk about is my temple plant itself. When I started trimming it up, I was really kind of surprised to see how bad it looked. I knew it was looking a little weird, but I didn't know how bad it actually looked. But that is what the leaves actually look like right now. And what that looks like to me is a calcium deficiency. And that makes perfect sense because I don't have any calcium in my water. I've got none. I've got no calcium and no magnesium. And that looks like a CalMag deficiency. So some of that odd growth might be something else. But very often when you have a CalMag deficiency, that actually affects how other trace elements are uptake by the plant and how they're used and so on and so forth. So calcium and magnesium are really important for the plant and I don't have any in this tank. I always wonder how my plants do so well. I get a lot of comments about it uh, being that I don't put any foods or ferts or anything in my tanks and I believe that is probably due uh, partially to being upstairs here, the tanks have a lot less dissolved CO2 in them than my tanks downstairs. Not because I put CO2 in the tanks down there, but the background atmospheric levels of CO2 in the basement are much higher than they are up here. And that does translate to having more CO2 in my tanks. I did a lot of uh, investigation, a lot of experiments with this early in my fish keeping. And I am convinced that while I don't get the kind of growth that you would get from genuinely injecting CO2, I do get enhanced growth in my tanks in my basement. And if it's not the CO2, then I don't know what it is because I definitely get better and more vigorous growth on all my plants downstairs than I do on these tanks upstairs. So having said that, all of the stuff that stays submerged grows at a much, much reduced rate to any kind of plant that grows emerged. So once this plant gets out of the water and it gets those leaves exposed to atmospheric levels of CO2 rather than dissolved levels of CO2, the growth rate goes through the roof. And of course it's directly under that really good light. It's getting a good full spectrum light on it for a solid 12, 14 hours a day sometimes in here. And it's now growing like gangbusters. And now it needs all the nutrients it can get. And it doesn't have any calcium or any magnesium in it at all. So what I've done is I took the cuttings and I'm going to try to get them rooted in. I put them in a grow out bucket in the basement. Uh, I don't have any kind of circulation or an air stone or anything in it yet. I may do that. I don't know if that's necessary. Uh, we'll see. But I did put a squirt of CalMag solution in there. And so I'm going to give them a little bit of CalMag and I'm going to give them a little bit of my uh, general purpose fertilizer, which is good general purpose fertilizer. It's not just an NPK fertilizer. It actually has uh, 202020 on the NPK, plus it's got all of the trace, boron, manganese, zinc, all that good stuff is in there too. So I'm going to put a little tiny bit of that in there. You generally don't need that kind of stuff when you're trying to root a plant in. But at the same time, I want there to be a little bit of nutrients in the solution uh, as the, the roots develop. I want them to have something to be able to use. So again, a very, very small amount of that. Not enough to burn it up or anything. Uh, just a tiny little bit of nutrient solution and a little bit of cow mag and I'm gonna see if I can't bring these leaves back to life well I guess I can't once a leaf looks like this from a calcium uh, deficiency it's done it'll never recover uh, it will only look worse from here but the plant can recover I can grow new new leaves back onto it and I can develop roots on those cuttings and we're gonna see if that happens in the meantime what I'm gonna do in this tank is I'm going to crush up some eggshells in a mortar and pestle and make it um, not powder, but pretty close. I'm going to grind it up pretty fine, and then I'm going to sprinkle it in there all around the bottom and just let it work its way down into the gravel, and the eggshells will hopefully provide uh, enough calcium and magnesium as they're dissolving that the plant will be able to pick up enough of that uh, through the roots and maybe that'll be enough. If not, I've got CalMag solution. I've never looked into whether or not uh, you could put fertilizer like that. 
you know, I use it for my house plants because again, I've got just nothing. Uh, and my water has zero calcium and magnesium in it. All my plants will suffer over time if I just water them with my regular water. I, I have to add stuff to it. So again, I've always sort of wondered myself about why my fish tanks seem to do so well without adding anything to them at all. And yet we find that once we get some emergent growth, that's no longer the case. And we go right back to problems I have with my water and house plants. And so again, uh, I do have a solution, uh, you know, <laughs> no pun intended. I have a cow mag solution uh, that I can put in here. I just don't know what that would do with the fish. I don't believe it would shift the pH. I really don't think I would have to put enough in here to that it would change the hardness you know, you think calcium and magnesium, that is what determines water hardness. You know, when you're measuring the degree of water hardness, you're really measuring the degree of calcium and magnesium. That's why I say I have none, because I have zero hardness. I have no calcium and magnesium in here. Iron also affects your hardness, but that's usually in very, very small amounts. Uh, typically, it's calcium and magnesium that we're talking about. And I just don't have any. So we'll see what happens with... Uh, adding some eggshells in here and then of course we'll keep an eye on what I've done down in the basement with the actual cow mag solution again I don't think I'd have to put enough in there that it would really shift the water hardness or pH or anything like that uh, just a little tiny squirt and we'll see what happens but I will obviously begin experimenting uh, with a different um, setup. I won't do that right here in the fish tank if I don't uh, get the results I'm looking for with the eggshells and I do have to resort to a cow mag solution. Uh, I will do my research. I'm not just going to start squirting stuff in the tank uh, and hoping for the best. Anyway, there you go. That's what's going on with my office tank. It was a little more involved than I expected. Didn't expect to have the uh, gardening session here, but I also didn't expect to find my plant suffering from a cow mag deficiency but there you go so you never know what you're going to get with me uh, make sure you subscribe that way you won't miss it you never know what it is and then don't forget of course this one here is my 20 gallon open top office tank so thanks again for watching and i'll see you real soon in the next one